Water pollution is when we come and make uh, our drinking water, that is internal usage water, contaminated. A boil water response is not appropriate when contamination is present. In a river, first of all, uh, we are blessed to have a lot of companies that employ our youths. So the companies that we do have, they come the first in water pollution. And then you have these other ones which discharge uh, effluent like the tanneries, the distillery which is there. Mm -hmm. So all these ones have to be proved by, by NEMA. The main sources of water pollution are emissions of untreated raw sewage from factories and untreated household water. The drinking water which we get in the river is in different forms. There's water coming from the from the Earth River, the point of Portland cement, where there's a big dam. They collect that water, mix it with uh, water from the boreholes, and then process it, and then distribute it to the residents of the river. The, the, the fact of the matter is that it's very challenging to because we cannot, from those sources, we cannot sustain the demand even halfway. Right? For the simple reason that uh, this water from Nairobi is actually allocated to EPZA, that is the zones. You ask me about the zone and the relationship. But the surplus of it was supposed to be getting into Maboko, uh, not the EPZ. And for the workers who want at EPZ, when they go home, they have to shower, right? And the obligation of supplying that water to them then, after the zone, is a Jukumuya Mabuasko. So that water is very little. As the population gets higher, the source of that water gets down. Maji yenye natoa kwa kilipton ni chumbi sana. Si tumi kwa kukunwa. Tumatumia kufuwa nguo, kuhoja fiombo. Ya kukunwa na shota kwa njuma, kuna hito kwa onomi jambani. Water is a basic need and no one can survive without water. So I think we should really check on that. And even when it comes to animals as a medical practitioner, once an animal consumes the water that has been contaminated, ama that has been polluted, and then you eat the meat from the animal. You see, once the animal takes the water, the contaminants, especially heavy metals, they are inorganic. They don't decay that fast. There was this period I was working at at the river as a clinical officer and we used to get like at least 70 cases of diarrhea and so went with typhoid, uh, kidney diseases 
H. pylori, and I think the reason why these diseases came up was because the people were using contaminated water. Eventually, humans are affected when their food is contaminated. In several nations, there is always outbreak of cholera and diseases as a result of poor drinking water treatment from contaminated waters. Human health is affected by the direct damage of plants. The effects of many forms of water pollution multiply as they move up the food chain. They give us no choice but to be concerned about them. Yeah, kama hii achunji ukikosekana sometimes unakunywa unasikia tumbo ni kama inafura haitoi kiu hata unajua majani na chumvi mingi haitoangi kiu watoto wa kiu wanaumwa na tumbo kwa hivyo kuna madhara katika wananchi recommend people to boil the water before they use and I can also recommend farmers the water that they use for irrigation the water that they use for feeding animals uh, they should check it whether it's polluted or whether it's not and if you have signs like diarrhea constipation uh, as stomach disorders I would strongly advise you to seek medical attention and get tested uh, take the medicine and follow the prescription as a resident of this place unika waida yeah i've ever been hospitalized because of typhoid i uh, visited doctors because of amoeba uh, so those are the things and cholera too I once had I was at that kind of disease, cholera, amoeba, but I was dogo before I learned about uh, these waterborne diseases. I was a jolly, because we had two seasons of running water everywhere. I was going to get out of the fresh air, I was going to get out of the fresh air, I was going to get So, yeah, I've once been there. This is not something which needs a lot of work. It's not something that needs one person to come up. It's just, it needs collectiveness, oneness. Waidera is a student of Daystar University and at the School of Communication. She has a task on her mind after falling ill. She decides to take a step towards the water situation in Athi River to save the Athi River, thus saving millions of lives in the future, doing research on the water conditions and ways to improve it for her, her fellow students and the residents of Athi River that heavily depend on the water. Why Thera buys water from the local community water supply? On a weekly basis, she spends about 100 shillings weekly on drinking water. And thus, as a resident in the area, she is also vulnerable to the water pollution in the area.
so we only use it for either greening or washing clothes. Not good for human consumption. Uh, the other source, as I said, is our own treatment plant, which we get water from River Api, and we treat it completely because surface water normally is treated as very suspicious, so you give it a full conventional treatment. And our treatment plant at the moment is only able to project 2.5 million liters in a day. That's within a 24-hour period. And again, that is too little. Okay. The other source was actually the Kilimanjaro pipeline, which initially, over 15 years ago, it used to give us about 3.5 million liters every day, but is now dead. We get near. Okay. So the challenge we have here is the demand is too high and the supply is too little. So the only option we see here is a scenario where we, as Maguasco, we need to develop our own independent water supply systems. And the good thing is that we already have an ongoing project to try to revive or to increase our production to about 12, I think yeah, about 12,000 cubic meters every day. So that will suffice probably for the next five years. But all said and done, we, I would suggest that we need a mega dam for this particular region as the population is moving from Nairobi down the sides. Some years back we never had this time university. Now you can see the whole campus with other dependents out of the campus and all those people need water. But every time we have to pump water, we only consider this time university. They are support staff who work there. They don't live in the campus. They have their own homes. Right? So my suggestion then would be we need to develop something like a mega dam to the standards of what is in the Dakaini or elsewhere and stop depending on this image Kidogo Kidogo from Nairobi and the, 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 the boreholes that are limited. Here you may even sink one or two boreholes in one area and you don't get water. agricultural runoffs that make their way into rivers and streams and groundwater sources. In the last few decades, there has been a tremendous increase in the demand for fresh water due to rapid growth of population and the accelerated pace of industrialization. Mbilangu kama serikali ya county ama kuu inaweza kusikiza tutafutiwe mali tunaweza toa maji maana maji ya kunywa ni lazima ununue kwa duka uweze pata maji ya matumizi mengine ina bei juu kwa hivyo ni kilio changu ya kwamba kama wana besta tunaweza kumbukwa na watu tutafutie hata kama ni bohole tuchimbiwe maji itatusaidia sana na tuweze kuuziwa kwa hela zenye ziko chini mtungi kama shilingi tano maana size ya tano maji ya kunywa mtungi huwa tunanunua na sabini maji fresh kwa hivyo naomba serikali tusaidie kwa county naona naona naweza tusaidia 
wangetafutia maji safi wakaaji wakunywa kwenye nakai area hata wengine wengine wa nje wanaweza tumia hiyo maji jua kitu ashiria hapo takuwa na mashida kwa mwili the good thing is that we already have an ongoing project to try to revive or to increase our production to about 12 to about 12000 cubic meters every day so that will survive probably for the next 5 years but all said and done we i would suggest that we need a mega dam for this particular region as the population is moving from Nairobi down the sides. Some years back we never had this time last year. Now you can see the whole campus with our dependence out of the campus and all those people need water. But every time we have to pump water we only consider this time last year. There are support staff who work there. They don't live in the campus. They have their own homes, right? So my suggestion then would be we need to develop something like a mega dam to the standards of what is in the Dakaini or elsewhere and stop depending on this image Kidogo Kidogo from Nairobi and the, 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 the boreholes that are limited. Here you may even sink one or two boreholes in one area and you don't get water. Uh, in Kenya, we have various institutions. We have a lot of uh, learning institutions. We have a lot of laboratories where we can go and check our water for heavy metals. Uh, we can check the water for purity level, as in we can check it for heavy metals. We can check it for even other contaminants, bacteria, viruses, and Actually, I think it's it, it's a right of every Kenyan. It, it, it's a basic. It, it's a right for, of every Kenyan uh, to consume clean water. It's very basic because I think no one can survive without clean water.